let's begin examining Southern society during Reconstruction. The first difficulty facing the South was that their economy had been decimated by the war. Many farms of all sizes were ruined and the population took a big hit due to the number of people who died during the war. The Republican governments had to step up to provide economic relief and social services to people who were struggling. Also, politics in the South changed. With the passage of the 15th Amendment, new Republican governments took over in the South. Southern Republicans were made up of three groups with conflicting interests. They were the Scalawags, Carpetbaggers, and African Americans. Scalawags were Southern Republicans. They tended to be smaller farmers who wanted to prevent the large-scale planters from retaking control of the Southern governments. Carpetbaggers were Northerners who moved South after the war in order to take advantage of the new political and economic opportunities the South presented. However, the three groups had different goals and presented a, lot, a lack of Republican unity. For instance, Scalawags were not committed to civil rights for African Americans, whereas that was the key concern for African American voters. Additionally, Southern whites in general were not going to instantly change their beliefs and opinions regarding African Americans, despite the clear need for a change in attitudes. Reconstruction did present positive changes for African Americans. During Reconstruction, African Americans founded churches which became the center of their communities. These churches, with assistance from the Freedmen's Bureau and other groups, helped to found public schools. In many cases, these were the first of their kind in any of the southern states. Education was key to ensure African Americans could become economically self-sufficient. Universities such as Atlanta, Fisk, and Howard were founded during Reconstruction. Politically, African Americans expressed their voting rights and also became office holders themselves. In 1870, Hiram Rhodes Revels became the very first African American U.S. Senator. Revels was Senator from, now this may surprise you, the state of Mississippi. However, the vast majority of African Americans were poor, landless, and had difficulty feeding their families. As a result, many African Americans became sharecroppers. Sharecroppers rented land from a large owner and farmed that land. The sharecroppers kept a small part of the crops they grew and gave the rest to the landowner. In theory, this would allow the sharecropper to feed their families and potentially save up money. However, keep in mind that landowners determined the rent and also sold most of the goods that the sharecroppers needed. So the landowners were able to set the prices. In many instances, the sharecroppers accumulated a debt to the landowner and were unable to ever leave unless they paid off their debts, which many would never have been able to. Overall, however, Reconstruction was a failure. It failed for a number of reasons. First was Southern opposition to Reconstruction. Southern vigilante and terrorist groups formed during Reconstruction, the most notorious being the Ku Klux Klan. This white supremacist organization's goals were to destroy the Republican Party, get rid, of, get rid of the Reconstruction governments, return the planter class to power, and to stop African Americans from expressing their political rights. Along with other such organizations, such as the White League, the KKK utilized violence and intimidation tactics to achieve their goals. It is estimated that the Klan killed as many as 20,000 men, women, and children. The favored form of murder and intimidation was lynching. Lynching involves the murder, typically through hanging, of an individual without trial or conviction of a crime. In response to the Klan and other groups, Congress passed the Enforcement Acts of 1870 and 1871. These acts provided key federal supervision of Southern elections and allowed the president to use federal troops in areas of strong Klan activity. Republican power in the South was also extremely hampered by the passage of the Amnesty Act in May of 1872. The Amnesty Act returned the right to vote and to hold public office to around 150,000 former Confederates. Also in 1872, Congress disbanded the Freedmen's Bureau, that year thus returning power in the South back to the Democratic Party. In the early 1870s, support for Reconstruction elsewhere in the country began to fade. In 1873, the country faced an economic depression that would last five years. The Depression turned Northern focused away from the South and toward repairing the economy. Despite continued social and racial issues in the South, the Republican Party began to focus less and less on Reconstruction. As Republican focus turned away from the South, Democrats known as Redeemers began gaining control. These Democrats presented themselves 
as the people who would redeem the South and return it to its former glory. Reconstruction came to an end in 1877 as a result of the 1876 presidential election. That year, Republican Rutherford B. Hayes ran against Democrat Samuel Tilden. Tilden won the popular vote, but was one vote shy of winning the Electoral College vote and thus the presidency. Four states remained too close to call. In order to end the election deadlock, Congressional Democrats agreed to accept Hayes as the president as long as federal troops were removed from the South. Remember, they were there due to the Reconstruction Act of 1867. Republicans agreed, and as a result of what became known as the Compromise of 1877, Hayes became president and Reconstruction came to an end. Reconstruction was also a failure due to the lasting legacy of racism. In the South, Reconstruction Reconstruction was replaced by white supremacy and segregation. The end of the 19th century, following the end of Reconstruction, became known as the Nader. The Nader was the low point in Southern race relations. When Southern Democrats took power, they went about stripping African Americans of many of the rights they had secured during Reconstruction. Chief among these was voting rights. By the 1890s, African Americans had essentially lost their right to vote. Southern states passed a series of measures to block voting rights, including poll taxes, literacy tests, which were extensive civics tests designed to be failed, and residency requirements. Now these new voting laws would have blocked not just African Americans from voting, but also many poor whites, which was not their intended goal. So grandfather clause were clauses were implemented. The grandfather clauses stated that people who were eligible to vote in the 1867 election and all of their descendants were exempt from the literacy tests and paying poll taxes. The 15th Amendment did not get ratified until 1870, meaning that all white men retained an unfettered right to vote, but black men were essentially disenfranchised. With white Southern Democrats in power, segregation laws began to be passed. Segregation was the separation of races in public spaces such as schools, restaurants, transportation, restrooms, etc. Segregation laws became known as Jim Crow laws. These laws were challenged all the way up to the Supreme Court on the grounds that they violated the 14th Amendment. The Supreme Court, however, ruled in Plessy v. Ferguson that segregation did not violate the Constitution as long as the facilities were separate but equal. Important to note, segregation was also present in the North. However, in the North, segregation was not established through law, but more through the actions of policies, businesses, and customs. The impact of segregation can still be seen today as many cities are still segregated into neighborhoods containing predominantly one race. All right, so to recap, the Republicans in the South depended on carpetbaggers, Northerners who moved South, Scalawags, we were Southern Republicans, and African Americans. Some positives of Reconstruction included the creation of public schools, especially for former slaves, and political involvement of African Americans. However, Reconstruction failed due to the legacy of racism, including the elimination of black voting rights and segregation, the, economics, the economic dependence of African Americans through sharecropping, freedmen lacked education and political experience to stop Southern Democrats, white terrorism from the Ku Klux Klan and other similar groups, and the loss of Northern interest in Reconstruction.